But we begin with a new move that is rattling the Trump White House, which has built its stonewalling strategy around executive privilege, invoking it to stop testimony of, say, star witnesses from the Mueller probe like Don McGahn. Now, here's the thing about that strategy. You know that I try to keep it real and accurate and fair with you. Well, here's the thing. The executive privilege strategy, it might look secretive. It might even look a little guilty. But invoking White House privilege for the White House counsel, that can be totally legally valid. It at least creates a legitimate fight in court, which can take a lot of time. But the news tonight is a little different. Democrats hatching an end run around that potentially valid strategy. Now, they're going to continue the contempt votes and the court battle over McGahn, to be sure. But they're also turning to put the heat on witnesses who never worked in the White House and thus have no claim to White House privilege, zero, including convicted felons Paul Manafort and Rick Gates, trying to get their testimony, plus advisors like Corey Lewandowski, who we know dished to Mueller, and Chris Christie. Now, hearings with those famous names might put more pressure on Trump, who was turning the conversation away from collusion in the Russia probe until... He famously played himself in this new ABC interview, and the rest of it, parts that hadn't aired as of last Friday, have just come out. And they feature a very kind of who's on first routine about the Mueller report, which of course found no Russia conspiracy as a criminal matter, but did not ever use the lens of collusion. Are you trying to say now that there was collusion, even though he said there is no collusion? He didn't say there's no he collusion. He said no collusion. He said he didn't look at George, collusion. George, the report said no collusion. Uh, did you read the report? Uh, yes, I did. And you should read it, too. I read Come on, it. let's go. <laughs> you should read it, too, George. You should read it, too. I'm joined now by former federal prosecutor John Flannery, Washington anchor for BBC News, Caddy Kay, and the Center for American Progress Action Funds, Juanita Tolliver. Uh, Caddy, everyone should read it. I think the president makes a fair point there. Uh, what do you think of, of both the new strategy that we're seeing in the Democrats' eye and uh, what Donald Trump did or didn't get out of what was a, a pretty mammoth interview that keeps making news? Look, the Democrats are being frustrated that the White House is stonewalling, so they are looking for other avenues to try and get the information that they want in order to be able to push ahead with their investigations um, of the president. They're going to be dismayed by the fact that the White House deputy counsel, I think it was last week, said that actually maybe executive privilege doesn't just apply to the president and people who have worked in the administration, implying that perhaps these other people, people like Gates and Manafort, Chris Christie, Lewandowski, but that then the where does Democrats, it end? I know where do, uh, whatever the slippery def definition is that you happen to want to put it on that day, if you are sitting in the White House at the moment, it seems like. Uh, John. Well, what I see is the White House is uh, their strategy is lie and delay and, and to make up legal theories that will fit delay. The trouble on the House side is whatever theory they use, why aren't they in court? I mean, a week ago, we had them get the ability by resolution to go and enforce a subpoena. Why wouldn't a litigator have that in court the next day after they had the authority? The trouble is both sides have delay and both sides are not joining the issue of impeachment. And I only say that because in the court, when they have the fight, they need that as part of their fight to justify the demands that they're so making. Let's, let me give you both of those points then, John. Uh, number one, with regard to how they're doing, uh, Politico basically makes the argument that Democrats say the House Foreign Affairs Committee is amassing documents on the allegations regarding retaliation to the State Department, and they've secured wins on a number of fronts. Aides and lawmakers alike say that's from the under the radar support they're getting from certain Republicans, as well as Nadler arguing that they got the breakthrough, they got the full Mueller report, they got Bill Barr to compromise. Uh, how do you put those claims against what you're giving them as less than an A, a grade? Well, it feels like the submariners are having these private victories that nobody in the public knows about it, and it's not reducing those among us who say, why aren't you doing the ultimate thing? It's like you're dragging your feet. It's a slow walk to saying, what, we can't impeach and we won't do anything at the end? So it, it's not persuasive, it's not persuasive to me or to anyone who follows such investigations on the Hill. Well, you have some agreement from AOC uh, on John's point. Well, I need to take a listen to what she's saying about Pelosi. So how real is that progressive frustration that Speaker Pelosi has said, at least so far, and she seems to be really holding the line that she's not ready to do that? I think it's quite real. Um, I believe that there is a, a very real animus and desire to make sure that we are um, that that we are holding this president to account. Juanita. 
Yeah, right. There is clearly friction within the Democratic caucus on how to proceed here. And what I think Nancy Pelosi um, on the same day shared was that this is still a divisive issue and the public needs more education. And the polling backs her up on this, right? Like uh, among, while there's great support among Democrats, only 27 percent of the country, according to an NBC poll, is actually ready to move forward, whereas there's far more support for conducting in investigations and getting additional information. Yeah, and, and the historical examples there are the support for Nixon's removal increased as the process played out going forward. Now, Caddy, as you know, Donald Trump is a famously obsessed with history, a real history buff. Hmm. Well, what are you suggesting there, Ari? Well, take a listen. Uh, maybe he's Nixon, only interested man. in uh, self-preservational historical lessons. Uh, but now that the Mueller thing, in his view, is, is done, um, he had a take, a hot historical take on what is to be learned from the Nixon Saturday Night Massacre. Take a look. Robert Mueller had a total conflict of interest. I never, I didn't say that. Article two would have allowed me to fire him. So it sounds but like I you're... wasn't going to fire. You know why? Because I watched Richard Nixon go around firing everybody, and that didn't work out too well. Caddy, fact check, true. Uh, yes. I mean, interestingly, you also had then John Dean on the Hill last week saying that the Mueller report was the equivalent of the Watergate report for for Trump as it was for Nixon. So uh, an, another perhaps fact, historical reference that the president has not drawn up. The, the, the issue for Democrats is, look, you still only have 66 Democrats who have come out and said that they are in favor of impeachment. And Nancy Pelosi knows that she also has to listen to the look ahead to 2020 to holding the House and there are going to be what 25 to 30 House seats that are held by Democrats that the Republicans have their eye on in districts that Trump won and those are the Democrats who are saying on a regular basis to the leader if we go ahead with impeachment without a guarantee of conviction then we may as well hand over the House and potentially the presidency uh, to the Republicans and she's listening to both of she's hearing loud and clear from AOC on the Sunday shows and some of those progressive voices are very loud but make no mistake that she is also hearing from those um, moderate Democrats in, in red districts mm. who are saying to her, this is a real problem for us. And look at the Iowa polls. The top 10 issues that voters in Iowa care about do not include the Russia investigation or impeachment. Well, Caddy, you know some people wear their, their emotions on their sleeve. It's a thing. John Flannery wears his right across his face, and he, he, is, Do I really? he is in severe disagreement with the points you raise, which I think are, are methodical and factually based. But, John, I, I give you a chance to emote because I could see you disagree. Well, let's try the deliberate approach. First of all, that Mr. Trump cares at all about history is a lie because he's already been doing precisely what Nixon did. And that's what we have to get used to, except when he makes an admission, we don't have anything to rely on. And I'm putting my stock and trade in the facts and the law and the oath of office that our representatives took and are not acting upon. That's it. It's that simple. And for people to predict what's going to happen in an election when they fail their oath of office now and expect they're going to take the oath of office again and tell the public that they can rely on them, those Democrats who say they're for impeachment are talking truth to fact, to law, to oath. Mm. And that's what we need to do. Caddy and then Juanita. Yeah. I mean, I guess the question will be whether the public opinion polls shifting, and we saw that spike in Democrats by about 10 points in favor of impeachment over the weekend, whether those people then start calling their members and you start getting members becoming more than 66 and that number starts growing because the public is also growing in favor of impeachment. Yeah, I think a key thing here, and we've heard it from some of those frontline Democrats, is this is not an issue that's being talked about at home, but mm. Trump's efforts to obstruct our investigations are concerning and do prompt issues that need to be considered. And so what I think, especially hearing from someone like Katie Porter out in California, is that she is definitely listening to, listening to her constituents. She's also reacting accordingly to Trump obstructing investigations mm. by um, raising a light on that even further. But uh, make no mistake, those frontline Democratic candidates 
candidates in Trump-held districts are definitely keeping an ear to the ground with their constituents because that's who they have to answer to for all of this. Action. Right, and, and that sort of becomes a classic political bank shot where every reference to what those folks want becomes a reference, those members, becomes a reference to what they want in their district. So it's, it becomes a circular thing that, that Flannery was getting at, which is, okay, who's leading where public opinion goes? Obviously, it's fair to say there's a wide, wide set of views on both sides, even within just the Democratic caucus. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.